Starting recording. All right, it's recording now. What's up, Baldo? All right, you ready? Mm-hmm. Uh, three, two, one. What's going on, everybody? It is Friday, October 11th, and you have found the Pinwheels and Ivy podcast. I am your host, Southside Zoe, and we have a very special treat for you this week, ladies and gentlemen. You are privileged enough to be hearing the inaugural Zoe and Kevin show. Because this is me and Kevin, all those busy. Nuke is not giving kids A's because he's a dick. And so it's me and Kevin this week. What's up, Kevin? How's it going, bud? What's up, bud? All I can think about is the fact that right now, in a metaphor, we're riding a tandem bike together to the song of uh, In the Summertime. That's all I can think of. I, I mean, I don't, I don't mind. I have the umbrella. I'll wear the white. I wear the white. That's fine. I, I'm cool with that. So. That's fine. You're, I think you are a little more pure. So that's fine. You wear the white, but so me and Kevin are going to talk about some stuff this week. Uh, Kevin just showed me as a bowl full of ice and white claws. So that's usually a good promising thing for you, the listener. Um, We're going to talk a little bit White Sox hitting coach. We're going to talk uh, about a great string of tweets from uh, a member of White Sox Twitter, which I want to give him recognition and Kind of go over this because, and Kevin hasn't heard this team yet, so I want Kevin's like gut reaction. And then we're going to talk about the Cubs managerial situation and how job openings somewhere else, suck at Kepler, are going to maybe throw a wrench into what the Cubs want to do, maybe not. Um, so all that, and you know damn well when it's just me and Kevin, that shit's going to get weird. So stay tuned and let's tap this guy. As always, this show is brought to you by Sports Mockery, sportsmockery.com. Make sure you're downloading the application, enabling push notifications, so you will be the first person to find out all things Chicago news, like the fact that the Blackhawks are up one and nothing right now, but you're listening to this Friday morning, so that's not breaking news anymore. So shit, that sucked. Anyways, (laughs) all kinds of breaking news. I'm very happy that the Blackhawks are playing again. Um, But let's start with the White Sox hitting coach. You good over there, Kev? How's Vegas treating you? That's warm, sort of. It was windy today, but, you know, not as windy as it probably uh, can be when you're on, you know, Twitter and you hear everyone with their uh, with their advice of how to fix franchises. And so obviously you got the White Sox pulling out a pretty good move, bringing in somebody familiar with their young pups that allows those guys to make a great transition to the big club. I think it's a great move. 100 percent agree with you. Um, so for those of you that don't know who we're talking about, the White Sox promoted, uh, hitting coach Frank, and I'm going to butcher the shit out of this name. Menachino. Menachino. Oh, that's okay. That's not that bad. Frank Menachino. Uh, he was the hitting coach in Charlotte this year. Um, but before that, uh, he was the hitting coach for the Miami Marlins and cool tidbit. I had no idea until today and I'm not going to front like i know all about frank menachino oh i like how you say your name you start moving your shoulders yeah, oh yeah when you, you say talking with your hands yeah you start talking with your hands you know you can't say yeah. it sentence hey it's frank menachino hit the and ball you know i'm gonna stab you in the eye with an ice pick if someone has a bad swing <laughs> he doesn't say excuse me that's off he goes oh oh whoa what are you oh, doing oh my oh gabba cool uh <laughs> but frank and we're he looks the part so much. Uh, I'm looking at his picture right now. His mug shot. Yeah. But Frank, uh, I did not know this, but people dug it up as soon as the hire was, or the promotion, I should say, was announced that uh, Giancarlo Stanton, very good hitter in this league, um, basically said that while in Miami, uh, he gives Frank all the credit in the world for helping him take that next step and becoming the prolific power hitter that he is today and like i was telling kevin pre-show all i hear when i hear that is Aloy's hitting 80 bombs this year <laughs> i mean that's just facts people but i mean kevin you could talk to this as a coach how important is it that he has a relationship with zach collins nick magical danny mendick luis robert and these other guys that are, these guys that are supposedly going to be the focal point of this big turnaround year in 2020, I mean, is, that's got to count for something, right? Absolutely. I mean, trust is everything when you have someone that's working on your craft with you. I mean, you know, you see players like Chris Bryant, his best hitting instructor his entire life is dad. Bryce Harper, very similar situation. 
that's an extended version of trust. But then you look further into it and you look at some of these guys that, that do, they work with these individuals and they establish a rapport, they establish a trust. And, you know, just like you have friends that can finish your sentences, when you have a hitting instructor that just knows your swing, Mm -hmm. um, you can tell, I mean, honestly, I can tell you if he, if he's this familiar and, and, and it sounds like he is with some of these guys, he can he could have his back to the cage, and he'll know precisely what happened by the sound. Because again, when you're a hitting instructor, you're hearing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of reps from individuals on a consistent basis. You know when they're squaring up, and all of a sudden it becomes so familiar that that you know you almost you can almost like have your eyes closed and you can hear it. I mean, players each player has a, a, a sound, and so right. I think the fact that he's familiar with these guys, there's trust there. When they have mm-hmm. flaws in their swing, especially at the big league level, there's egos involved. I mean, oh, you yeah. saw what the Cubs did with Chili Davis when Chili probably started trying to change a lot of stuff with some of the lift and pull stuff in Chicago with the Cubs, and they sent him packing. Right. You got a guy here that not only is he familiar with them, but it sounds like he's got their respect. And having Giancarlo Stanton give you that kind of blessing and, and, and endorsement, that, you know, what else can you do? I mean, and so that, you know, we, the young pups hear a guy like that, a veteran like Giancarlo, say that. There's yeah. some credibility there, and, and they're going to be more inclined to listen and make adjustments on his word. Because the biggest thing, and I, I agree with everything you just said, and the biggest thing to me is his his work with Luis Robert. Okay, so, like, this guy is supposed to be, like, it. This is your guy next year, no matter what. And um, Actually, so Frank Menachino uh, came out, and he had uh, an interview with Chuck Garfine. Shout out, Chuck. You do great work. But – um and he asked Chuck asked Frank about Luis Robert, and he's like, the kid's a beast. And he goes, can you, what about him? And he goes, it's not the balls that he hits square. It's not the balls that, you know, he times up. It's, he goes, watch a couple of his home runs again. He is completely fooled by sliders down and away. He's way out in front of it, and he basically hits a one-armed home run. He's like, I've never seen a hitter do that before. He goes, he'll hit a ball, and I'll be like, pop out. And the next thing I know, it's going over the wall. His quote was, the kid is a beast. So I heard that, and I'm not going to lie, it moved a little bit when I heard that today. I was <laughs> like, yo, <laughs> what's going on? I got to go to the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> but, and I mean, he was no slouch. The Knights had a great year this year hitting. They they led the International League in run scored. They were second on on-base percentage, slugging percentage, and OPS, and third in home runs. I mean, he yeah. earned a, he earned a promotion. Let's kind of tell you, too, how the White Sox are feeling about the future of their, their franchise. It's not we're a year away or two away now. If they're bringing someone up like this with that kind of familiarity, that means that the young guys are on the way. I mean, that means that you're going to get a Lou Bob next year. Yep. You're going to get Nicky Mags next year. You're going to get these guys because they're, they're, they're bringing up their guy. I think that, right. you know, the continuity, I mean, just like with, I mean, I, you know, as a high school teacher, too, you know, if you could teach the same class, for four straight years as like an English teacher or a math teacher, think about the rapport that you would have with that class in year two, three, four. Like you're going to, you almost, you, again, you can finish each other's sentences because you're familiar with the way you speak. There's yep. no, like the communication skills there. It, it comes effortlessly. So I think that, that that is a real good indication that the White Sox believe that their young pups are on that brink now. And that next year isn't just a rebuild year, but it's more or less, let's, let's, all right, let's throw it down and see what happens kind of moment, which is, Got to be exciting for Sox fans, unless Jerry Reinsdorf is just doing this to sell tickets, <laughs> so they finished in second place. But right. um, did you notice? Did you know too that he was a 45th rounder at an, uh, for the White Sox in '93? He's a former White Sox yes. draft pick. So I mean, right. they're bringing someone that 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 they took, you know, back when there was 40, you know, 90 rounds in the, in the MLB draft. Right. And everyone and their cousin got drafted except me, apparently. But the mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> again, you've got a, it, it. It becomes a, a combination of family familiar. It's 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 really neat. I think I think it's a really good move. No, and he's yeah. younger too. He's only forty eight. I mean, he's not old. No, I'm a big fan of this. Uh, I heard a lot of good things from uh, some of the guys on White Sox Twitter that are around the farm system a lot more, like actually go and are close to it. And they were all pumped for this move, and that got me even more excited. So I think it's a great move. I'm happy about it. It shows to me that Han is kind of backing up what he said because he goes, "It's cool that we had a good team batting average, but the fact that that was it." Like, we need more. We need more. We need more. And I agree. And obviously, the proof is in the pudding. But, yeah, I'm, I'm good with that move. And so you actually brought something up, and we'd be remiss to not talk about it. 
And I kind of want Aldo here to talk about it because this is the kind of stuff he thrives on, but we'll give it a go. So this shit with Jerry Reinsdorf saying now this other owner or former owner came out and said that Jerry told him basically, ideally you want your team to continue to finish in second place because that's going to keep the fans wanting more. It's going to keep selling tickets. Basically it's like giving dog a half a steak and then putting the other half like out of his reach. And so that came out and people were pissed, myself included. And then they did a little damage control, like White Sox Dave and uh, some of these other people came out and they're like, oh, this is bullshit. You know, Jerry's the best. The the biggest champion for Jerry Reinsdorf, weirdly, has been Steve Stone. Like, he's been going off on Twitter and he's blocking everyone. It's really weird. Um, I'd be really sad if Steve Stone never blocked me. I, I, I adore Steve Stone. I actually, I mean, I've seen grown up as a Cub fan, too. So when Steve Stone talks, I listen. He's granted right. he's getting a little older now, but Steve Stone, I, I, I can honestly say how many people probably learn 90% of what they learn about the game of baseball through watching Steve, listening to Steve Stone. Oh, for you know, sure. Filtering through drunk Uncle Harry. Steve Stone was always throwing out nuggets of truth. And, and so he's not wrong, but you also had the opposite side of that coin. You had a very popular White Sox player who Arguably is one, also very controversial and has gotten his ass beat on the mound a few times in actual physical fisticuffs. Had a cool black eye for a while. I remember, was that like 91, 92, where he had the black eye or whatever? Yep. You got that, That was it Joe Carter? Was it Joe Carter that they got in that little brawl? Was it Joe that threw like the, the haymaker? I believe so, but keep going. I'll look it up. But, but he, uh, you know, so you have a guy, you know, Blackjack McDowell, who flat out says that he heard the same thing from the horse's mouth. And did, did he go on the radio yet, or was that still coming where he was going to go and tell the whole story? I know he was supposed to be. So that's the other thing. So this is where it gets weird, okay? So all of a sudden, uh, Steve Stone is, like, playing the role of company man, and he's towing the company line hard on Twitter. And then Blackjack puts that stuff out, and he gets invited on 670 to score. And everyone's like, sweet, we're going to hear him tell this story. He cancels the day of. Never does the radio, oh. apparently. So now there's all these White Sox conspiracy theories that Jerry and the crew are pulling some kind of strings behind the scene being like, Blackjack, you better shut the fuck up. So, (laughs) or he showed up like Scrooge McDuck with two burlap sacks with big dollar bag signs on them. (laughs) He's like, here you go, shut up. Or they just sent, you know, they sent Frank Frank Menachino to his house. Yep. With, 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 a, with a bag in a trench coat and said, I'm a new hitting instructor. Hey! Hey, shut your mouth. Or they showed Joe Carter showed up and just punched him in the face again. <laughs> uh, a, a stand up of Joe Carter, like a so plaque in front of his. So that was weird. And like the story's still pretty prominent, but like I know I shouted out Chuck and those guys on White Sox talked to a really good job, but they just released a brand new podcast and they didn't address it at all. They didn't even mention it happened. So being in Chicago sports for as long as I have, with the background that I have, like, I've seen and heard some things about all the teams in Chicago. Not one team is innocent about give or take control in the media a little bit. Oh, absolutely. It's called flack. Yeah. Right. And I don't know, man. This, this kind of stinks a little bit. It's probably nothing. I'm probably overthinking it. It's just the way I'm wired nowadays, but it's just weird to me how this was a huge thing, and then it's kind of like just, you know, they hire the new hit. It's I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if the Sox go out and make, like, a huge free agent signing in the next couple weeks just to be like, oh, look it. We're trying. It's real. Look it. And the cat's out of the bag, though, too. And what you're talking about, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Noam Chomsky, who's a very well-known media critic. Not, not necessarily, it has nothing to do with sports, in fact, it's a lot of politics more, but the corporate media model in general. Um, what they talk about is the idea of, fla- you know, I, yeah, I mentioned flack earlier. You know, mm-hmm. you, people get their press passes pulled. People, people lose access when right. they cross the wrong part of the franchise. And it's not something that's, it's not something strange. I know that for a fact here, I know multiple people here in Las Vegas that are on that list from UNLV. They're not going to get press passes because they 
criticized UNLV's administration and, and they've been very vocal about it. And their press pass has all of a sudden just magically disappeared. And if that's just like a smaller place, like here in Vegas, I can only imagine that in Chicago where it's a billion dollar company, um, nope. where something that could really hurt that bottom line, which is ticket sales and credibility. I, I wouldn't be shocked if, if, if he got a stern talking to or, and members of the media that have been given a little bit more access were told, Hey, look, I, let's drop this. Okay. You want to, you want in here? Well, right. then you don't need to talk about this. If you want this access, cause we'll find somebody else that will. And the idea of the corporate media model and, and, and how they can treat people with flack uh, and, and kind of draw them away from their subject. It, it's very easy to manipulate a sports writer that, because if you don't have access, you're just, you're a nobody when it comes to, you're you know, a blogger, you're a blogger. Yeah. And that's, yep. that's sometimes the, considered to be the, yeah, even though I don't feel it's that way, it is considered to be like the lower class citizen. And I would hope you don't want to be that. You're a freaking blogger, dude. I'm a freaking blogger. Uh, <laughs> right. So, but I'm just saying like, and, the White Sox, though, have been very good to bloggers. They they give bloggers, probably out of all the Chicago teams, the White Sox give the blog, bloggers more access than any other team does. So, I mean, I don't know if that would be the case with them. It's just really weird that the White Sox talk guys didn't mention it. Not one, Didn't even mention it, like, in passing. It's, like, the biggest story on White Sox Twitter. And then the fact that Jack McDowell canceled and then – uh, Steve Stone is champion, and I don't know. It's just something smells weird. I could be wrong. What? Give it a give it a week. You know what? Out of sight, out of mind. Too. The story will go away. In the oh news yeah. Cycle. If you if you if it's a week, if it's seven days, and it's not been, you know, really kind of pushed or pressed, it's gone. Something else is something else will grab their attention. You know, and they just you know we are such a short term memory kind of society that all it takes is a seven or eight day cycle, and it's we're on to the next. But I, I do think that Sox Fest will be pretty pretty um, entertaining. If if Jerry or or someone in that Jerry ain't going to that shit. Somebody gets a question <laughs> about that. I can imagine that being something that someone's going to bring up sooner or later, um, but not someone that's in the media. If they if they know it's you know if you know what's good for you, you ain't well, going to yeah. bring that up there. Big we'll guy. see because last year the Sox gave myself included and a lot of other bloggers uh, full pe- full media passes to Sox Fest. I mean, we'll see if that's the case again. We didn't get to ask shit for questions. Like when uh, Rick was on the podium doing his thing, like the real journalist, like looked at, like you said, like get to the back peasant. I was like, yeah, okay, <laughs> this is your gig, dude. I don't get paid for this. This is you, man. Go for it. But, and let's just, are you surprised? I mean, even if there's like an ounce of truth to this, I'm not, we've lived under the Reinsdorf regime for basically my whole life. I'm 35 years old. I'm, I didn't even flinch when I read this comment. I'll go further. It's the White Sox organization, Charles Comiskey. I mean, I mean, right. the Comiskey. I mean, the the fact is, you're the White Sox are as close to being owned by you know being almost like the brainchild of Barnum and Bailey, you know, PT Barnum or whatever, because mm-hmm. of the the amazing amount of like you know gimmicks and whatever that they utilized. I, I and again, but you look at the numbers too. I mean, it's not stupid. Mean, I think when we had a show. When we had a show back in the, you know, when 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 Machado and and Harper were possibly going to join the White Sox, and they had Bryce Harper at the United Center, they had a big old like "Welcome to the White Sox," and they put his number up on the board, and everyone's freaking out. And within mm-hmm. 24 hours of all that madness, the White Sox do a ticket drive for like ticket packages. Oh yeah. And then a couple of days later, then everything finds you find out Manny's gone, Harper's gone, but they they strike when the iron's hot. That's good business. That's not. I don't think that's sketchy by any means. I think intentionally trying to go second place would be sketchy, but I don't think at this point Jerry Reinsdorf is is he right. needs a title. He wants a title before he dies. I don't think the guy's gonna gonna to vacate that part of it for a couple extra dollars that he'll probably never touch. I think mm-hmm. that I think that maybe that's that's a secondary benefit. That hey, what's the worst thing that happens? Well, we finish in second place. We sell more tickets based on optimism. Sure, I mean, right. Let's, you leave. You always want to leave somebody wanting. It's called the ADA format. You know, get their attention. Right. You know, garner interest. Um, you know, get the desire, and then have them call to action and go and, and purchase the ticket. So it's 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 not an unknown marketing tool. But I just don't think that Reinsdorf is at this point in his life where he wants to. He's just trying to sell tickets. I think he's trying to win now. I think he wants one more parade before whatever sport it is, whether it's the Bulls or the or the White Sox. I think he wants something. Right, uh, like a legacy, like a uh-huh. like a right off into the sunset type deal. One and last round. With the state of both teams, the White Sox are probably his best bet because the Bulls stink out loud. 
Um, shout out to Bill Vec. You were a, a money ass owner. Bill Vec's the one that created the fireworks and had the dudes wearing shorts well, and had all that other stuff. But Bill Vec was like a crazy visionary. I got respect for that guy. I know some people disagree with some of his shit, but overall, shout out Bill Vec. It's actually a pretty good Twitter follow too. So, uh, speaking of the White Sox, so I really want to see your opinion on this. So, Austin Zick, and Austin, if I pronounce your last name wrong, I'm sorry. His last name is spelled D Z I K. So it's Austin D Z I K. His his Twitter is at D Z I K Head. So like at Dickhead. So shout out for a good Twitter <laughs> handle. Um, he put together. Di- I think it's Dizik. I think I'm gonna go Dizik. Austin, if you're listening, is it Dizik? I think it's Dizik. I know a guy named Austin Krizik, so that's why. I'm going Dizik. Um. But he put together what he thought the White Sox should look like in 2020, and he put salary numbers. Uh, Aldo will appreciate he used the Sport Track um, estimated value numbers, uh, all those big on those. And he asked White Sox Twitter, is this a playoff roster, or how off was he on the salary? Now, it looks like the Rays are going to get eliminated right now. So... With the teams that are left, you have the Yankees, the Astros, the Cardinals, and the Nationals. I believe Mr. Loaf put out their average team salary is going to be like around 150, 150 million. So this team that Austin put together would come in at like 139 and change. Okay, so that'd be up from what they currently spend. So here you go. Here's your pitchers. Dylan Cease, Lucas Giolito, Ronaldo Lopez, Michael Kopek, Zach Wheeler, Carlos Rodon, Aaron Bummer, Alex Calame. Where did the other pitchers go? Jimmy Cordero, right? Jace no. Fry. Oh, here you go. Yes, Jimmy Cordero, Jace Fry, Calvin Herrera, Evan Marshall, Ian Hamilton, Dylan Batances, mm-hmm. and Josh Oshik. Position players. He's given Batances $8.5 million, by the way. Po- position players. Abreu, T.A., Yo-Yo, Larry Garcia, Eloy, uh, Luis Robert, Nick Madrigal, James McCann, Yaziel Puig, Yasmani Grandal, Danny Mendick, and Howie Kendrick. Grand Slam, Howie Kendrick. Yeah, hero. So he's given Puig 15 mil, he's given Grandel 18.5, and he's given Kendrick 5 mil. He's given James McCann 4.9 million. Earned. Yes. And he's giving Zach Wheeler 25 million. So with all the other salaries and that put together, it comes to 139, basically just under 140 million. And he's asking if you think that's a playoff roster. I love this roster. I am a big fan of this roster. I think there's a lot of wins in that roster in that central division in the American League. That's for sure. Um, Because I think there are a couple teams in that that division that are pretty far away from being like serious. I mean, obviously the the Twins, or not the Twins, the uh, the freaking Tigers are like like 120 lost team probably for another year. The Royals are really bad. I mean, that right there alone... You know, I think Cleveland's starting to fall off a little bit. I think they might do a fire sale in this offseason as well. You're going to see a lot of guys moving out. So I think the White Sox have a real good opportunity to, to – and, and then we saw with the Twins, they're a little exposed too. The division does help get you God in. damn it, the Twins. Test. You are such a waste of a baseball team. Oh, my God. How much – I have you ever seen a team be owned by another team as bad as the Yankees own the Twins? Oh no! I mean, that went all the way. That's back to like the '90s, like early '90s too. It's right? unbelievable. I mean, yeah, it's unbelievable. But anyways, back to this team. Austin, shout out! I think that's a great squad. I love that he didn't go crazy and you know and get like Rendon and all these other guys. Like Puig's been on the White Sox radar for years. That's like the worst kept secret in baseball. Uh, I think Sox he's a, fans will love him too. Yeah, yeah. and he's a, he's a fit with the rest of this team's culture. Yep. Uh, if they can get Grandal. I'd be pumped. Him and McCann are a great one, too. Uh, Zach Wheeler would be in. I think 
this the squad that he put together needs a little bit more pitching, but you can maybe work a trade in for some of these minor league guys. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you got a lot of cost control. I mean, you got a couple guys that are really cost effective. I mean, Giolito's five hundred sixty-five thousand dollars a year. I mm-hmm. mean, that's a that's a drop in the bucket. That's what you give. That's that's a. I mean, that's cheap for a guy right. that. <laughs> I mean, that's not even you're not even pushing even remotely close to like some of like these dudes that like basically are paid to sit on the bench and pick their nose. And right. he is an impact guy. So he's obviously you got to strike while the iron's hot. When you have those low cost guys, you front load some of these contracts with like a Wheeler or, or a, a, you know, or a, you know, Puig or, you know, again, a Grandal. You can front load those contracts now, back load, like take them down like a peg as they move on. So they have an opportunity with some financial flexibility with these cost controlled guys. That's, I mean, not to mention the younger guys that are going to come up too. I mean, his lineup, you know, you got Lou Bob at 565. You've got, you know, that mm-hmm. you got Magical at five. I mean, you've got these guys at league minimum. I mean, you're going to have, those are like four starters in league minimum. So you can spend a little bit early and then those guys will earn their keep. And then, of course, obviously, sooner or later, you got to give them a little bit of money so they're not, you know, right. eating too much dominoes like, like our, you know, a lot Pantera enjoys. Ugh. So, I mean, maybe he could just, you could help him get like a dominoes endorsement deal or something he was at the uh he was at the tampa bay playoff game not the one right now he was at game four and i mean homeboy you just made a couple million he's sitting in the 500 section it's like come on lou bob splurge a little bit he did buy his family this pimped out ass glass domino table that has like white Sox (laughs) logos all around the side of it and in the middle of it is a baseball diamond and it's like cool airbrush photos of him and his white socks uniform and shit like that. It's nice. pretty badass. Uh, yeah, you can't be more Cuban than that. But it's it's pretty sweet. And I don't know. I did, that, that kid just gets me excited. I'm very curious to see how this plays out. But I really like that team. I mean, and then I guess kind of switching over just to the MLB postseason, like we just touched on, the Twins fucking suck. The Yankees own them. They sweep them three to nothing. Uh, you got Tampa Bay. Looks like they're about to get eliminated by Houston. But, you know, shout out Tampa Bay for, I guess this is the shout out episode. I've given a lot of shout outs. Uh, but to Tampa Bay for taking Houston to game five. Uh, St. Louis spanked the Braves on the bottom. So rest in peace to my Braves hat. Um, St. Louis moves on. And then. You got the Nationals upsetting the Dodgers in a wild game five. Wild game five. And just spoiler alert for everyone out there, Clayton Kershaw is done, son. He is <laughs> he is done, son. <laughs> Poor Twitter last night. Twitter was so entertaining. Right. Like, the, the for, Kershaw yeah. wore it so bad. Like, that's the kind of night that Kershaw probably more than likely, A, never even looked at his pick. Didn't even pick up his phone probably last night. No. If that if if that thing is in one piece at all, yeah, that was, I you know, and I feel for the dude. Honestly, I really do. I he's a he's a he's one of the best pitchers of all time. I yes. mean, like Greg Maddox struggled in the playoffs too. It's weird how two guys that could be so absolutely fantastic. It's just it's it's amazing what that mental edge can do to a player. It's here. Oh shit! Here we go again. And I think after they gave up the first jack, I think I mean was it consecutive pitches? Am I going crazy? No, it was. Um, it was back to back. Immediately right into a like bam. And then you're like, oh no. And before he had a chance to even like regain his composure, he was being booed and, and pulled out of the ballgame. I mean, I've never heard that guy booed before. And I I guess it goes to show too that all fans are meatheads. I mean, God, Dodger fans should be sucking that guy's toes. Um, for what he's done for that franchise over the course of his career, and they're really happy you said toes because he can't, he didn't get the job done. And again, Chicago fans have been that way. Cub fans are oh, yeah. spoiled, petulant children right now. It makes me want to puke right now. But I've I, then I'm realized they're calling for Dave Roberts to be fired. The man has gotten the team to the postseason seven straight seasons, and they're going to can the guy. He's got two World Series bursts. He's been the NLCS what three of the last four seasons. Can the guy? I mean, it's ridiculous, and it's got Joe Madden. I always thought was going to get like a, a permanent love story, I, you know. But really, honestly, the two guys, Joe Madden, who was the manager for the 2016 Cubs, and Chris Bryant, who was the MVP of the you know 2016 Cubs that won the first World Series in 109 years, both those guys, fans can't get rid of them soon enough. The disloyalty wow. that has changed 
in the last 20 years from fan base. It's crazy. Back in the day, if a guy like Dale Murphy wanted to retire a Brave, it didn't matter if he couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat. We're going to let Dale go out into the sunset himself. And now right. fans have gotten to this point. So watching Kershaw get booed last night disgusted me. But Dodger fans are Dodger fans. Dodger oh. fans are going to Dodger fans. They're going to leave early anyway. Let them go. Let the dude go, maybe. They maybe. didn't even just boo him. Dudes were running down to the field and taking their jerseys off, like fans. Taking off their Kershaw jerseys and throwing them on the field. Like, fuck it, I don't want this anymore. That's what hockey fans do when their team sucks. This is like one of the great – this is a Hall of Fame pitcher. Yeah. And he hasn't been healthy for three years. Three years he hasn't been healthy. Pedro Martinez says it too after the game. And, dude, there's videos of <laughs> – this is fucking wild. People are leaving. And, I mean, it's Dodger Stadium, so people are leaving – it's a line of cars, crazy traffic. These two dudes went out there, took off their Kershaw jerseys, laid it down on the ground, and people were running over the Kershaw jerseys with their car. I mean, the disrespect was like through the roof for this Hall of Fame pitcher. And the reason why I straight up said he's done is, I don't know if you, did you see him after the game, his comments? All I can think of him is, is him sitting in the dugout staring at his cup. Oh, Down. yeah. And I just hear that, all I hear is he's a kid in place. That really sad song. But um, It reminded me of Pablo Escobar in, in Narcos. <laughs> Stuck at the ranch. Just sad. Uh, no, that, you know that song where he's talking about like the only good dreams he has are the ones in which he's dying? I can't think of it. Mm. But anyways. <laughs> It's fucking me up. I can't think of it. Anyways, no, so I heard a sound clip of, you know, Kershaw and the reporter goes up to him. And the first thing he says, like, well, maybe everyone's right about me in the playoffs. As soon as I heard him say that, I was like, bro, you are done, son. If you're letting, if you're buying into that bullshit yourself, it's just, it's game over. I don't know how he comes back from that. I hope he does. Hall of Fame pitcher, but. I don't know. That's pretty fucked. Yeah. Well, you know what? Maybe, maybe, yeah, Dodgers cut them loose. Sure. We'll take them. Everyone will take them. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, the, only, the last thing that I really want to touch on is, since the last episode, Girardi had an eight-hour interview. Mm-hmm. And then Thursday, David Ross had his interview, and they went to Starbucks, and Theo laughed the whole time. There's pictures all over the place. Um, but the interesting thing to me is Gabe Kapler got handed his papers by the Phillies. And you and I were talking about it a little bit before we came on here. Girardi's pretty much a perfect fit for the Phillies. And some people think, you know, Joe Madden, you know, because he, he's from Pennsylvania, he might want to go home. I'm pretty sure Joe's already chalked in penciled in the west coast one way or the other but i mean you're the one that has this theory about you know the cubs don't need the hard ass that's joe girardi so you think that he's a good fit for the phillies though right mm-hmm. i do i think he's got he's got a real tough um he's a hard we i mean we joked last last week but joe Girardi's kind of a dickhead like he's a he's one of those types of coaches and that's not a bad thing to each their own there are coaches that are you know, huggers and some are ass kickers. I and mean, he's one of those kind of guys that doesn't deal with a lot of crap. He carries mm-hmm. around, you know, a 50,000 page, you know, three ring binder, which tells me that he knows nothing of analytics. Cause I can tell you what that is. That's a catcher's binder. That is not an analytical binder. That's like actual spray charts and, and shit, right. like not actual analytic data, data, but he's one of those guys that is, he's a guy, you know, the, I think the Phillies need a guy to throw someone up against the wall. That's kind of a little bit more of their mentality. Bryce is a, balls deep testosterone kind of guy he mm-hmm. thrives on that whoa kind of mentality cubs aren't woo mentality i mean you might get javi or Contreras a little bit woo but these guys are more or less these are calm low pulse kind of guys in the cubs and so getting a guy that comes in that's going to get in their face is a terrible idea you might as well trade chris you might as well trade rizzo you might as well trade javi because those guys Contreras, because those guys are going to drive girardi nuts It'll take three or four games for Girardi's benching them for attitude. Like Girardi's that guy, and great for the Phillies because they do. They need it. Something they need something. And Kapler, you know, he I think he was doomed before he started because he was already dealing with like the 
like the sexual harassment stuff and all that. Stuff. I mean, the dude was already like beat before he got there. And I don't you know. Kapler's actually a pretty hard nosed dude too, but I think Girardi just, he's a catcher and he just has that like mentality. So it's a good fit for Philly. He's just a horrible fit for Chicago. It's just not, I mean, all these Cub fans that are saying it's just because it's like the glamorous thing to say. It's like saying, you know, that Mike Ditka is the greatest coach in NFL history. Let's be honest. He's not. Woof. But let's be honest. He's not. I mean, he's he one of No, but, no, he's not. But when McCaskey, <laughs> you know, McCaskey, when people forget about the, the lean years too. It's, it's so, it just, you know, it's, it's, they're making Girardi something he's not. Um, and it's not a good fit for the analytical, you know, I mean, there's a build and there's a manager for every type of build. And he is a great match for that build in Philly. He's a terrible mm. match for the build in Chicago. I don't think he's a great match like for like for the White Sox. If they were the White Sox were looking, it'd be a bad build. But a team like, say, uh, you know, you look for teams that are a little more hard nosed blue collar. And that's where he would fit well. Um, but he's just the Phillies job, I think, is like prime for him. So right. that was a huge open for him. And that could, you know, if, if even Theo was entertaining even the idea of hiring Girardi, which he, obviously he had to have because he did the eight hour interview. But hopefully that pulls it off the table immediately and pulls the carpet out from under him if he was ever considering because I think that would be the biggest disaster ever for, for the Cubs. Philly's right. great. Perfect. And remind everybody who you want the Cubs to hire. Ryan Christensen with the Oakland Athletics. Hasn't even been mentioned for an interview, although um, they are. They looks like they are going to talk to what's-his-name from the Astros. I'm okay with that. Uh, the bench uh, coach. The bench coach, yeah. And Christensen, still my guy. Uh, I, you know, it's a long process. Theo doesn't have to rush. You know, it's not like college sports where, like, you got to hire a coach so the recruits don't bail on you. It's not like, you know, the free agency market doesn't even open up for another, how many more weeks? What, two, three weeks maybe? When the weird World Series kind of ends, when the, when the calendar flips over. You don't have to rush into a decision. So Theo's going to take his damn time, and he should. Um, he's interviewing the usual suspects right out of the gate. Girardi was always someone that people talked about. People are happy. Yay. You know, they, you know, they interview Rossi. Yay. You know, right. probably sell a few ticket packages here and there. Um, but they're going to do their due diligence. And Theo's got his process. And, I, you know, his process is exhausting. You know, Joe Girardi looked like he was being walked out to execution when he was done. You mm -hmm. know, David Ross was sipping on his iced coffee today. So there's right. different people for different types of things. And, and maybe Girardi got into that interview and he's probably four hours in going, oh, shit, I made a mistake. This right. is not the same for me either. And so, you know, it really is. It has to be a good fit because it has to be a communication thing with the up, you know, upper management, with the front office. But it also has to be a communication thing with the guys, you know, um, in the clubhouse. And I, I'm looking at Davey Martinez, and I honestly think the two best managers for the Cubs, <laughs> God, the Cubs aren't going to be able to steal Davey back. But no. I think the biggest mistake the Cubs made was letting Davey walk after 2016. The Cubs haven't been the same since he left. He was a fantastic bench coach. And if they knew that Madden was going to be let walk that, you know, two mm -hmm. years, three years down the line, why the hell not keep this guy around as the heir apparent? Obviously, he's a perfect example because that team is a bunch of dog fighters. I love it. They come yeah. back every day. They don't quit. And, and I just wish like, they didn't have Adam Eaton. Fuck yeah. Adam Eaton. And you can't steal. You can't steal. Like, I, I think another good match for the Cubs would be um, uh, Terry Francona. I think that that's another good, like, but you can't pilfer guys like that. So what are you going to do? You got to go find the next version of that. And, and Theo's process is kind of meant to kind of weed out the fakers and wannabes or the bad fits. And <laughs> I think Ross survived. He looked happy and chipper today. So I, I'm assuming that he probably was in his element. Girardi looked like he was being led to execution. I, you know, I'm curious to see how uh, – was it uh, – who's the next one? Um, uh, is it Levine? No, not Levine. Is it Levine? No, it's no. Uh, oh shit! What's his name? Uh, Loretta and Venable. Venable. Oh, Venable. That's right. Will Venable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm one. I, I, I it kind of cracks me up because Gordon Whitmire or whatever's you know like camped. I don't know what he's got like GPS on on Theo's wallet or whatever, but he's like camped out taking pictures of people. And you can, you know, in a weird way, he's he's an effective fool. He's he's getting the facial expressions of people in the middle of a process that some people probably thrive and some don't. And I'm curious to see how some of the next few guys that go through but i don't think the cubs are going to make a decision for another three maybe two three weeks minimum uh and i don't blame them for it i wouldn't be upset why rush they got plenty right. of time unless you're going to go with david ross and just rip the band-aid let him get to work yeah but he wants to do due diligence you know and also it also helps the cubs as a franchise you interview some of these guys from these successful franchises it's not just about the interview it's about filtering some of their philosophies and their ideas and honestly when you interview as a coach you you're giving some of yourself away especially in an eight-hour interview. So I, I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't be shocked if some of this stuff is, is a really good opportunity for Theo and Jed to kind of like 
make little side notes like, hey, the Astros like to do this. They do this. Oh, the A's did this. Or, you know. Oh, I see what you're saying. All right. Gonna, they can, you know, it's like, it's like when a guy shows up with his playbook. Hey, let me see your playbook. That's a really cool playbook. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, photocopy, photocopy. All right. All right. Well, we're going to go in a different direction, but we have your playbook. So it, they, they are doing this to kind of bolster, I think, their position, too, to see what else is, what, else, what other philosophies are out there. And I think that, that Theo is not stupid. He's going to be doing this as much as possible because he wants every possible advantage. He's not going to play to the, uh, the, uh, the questionables. He's going to, he's going to do what he can do to make sure that he has all the questions answered and you're going to play the highest percentage. What do you talk about for eight hours? Well, they, I know they do simulated ball games. Oh, okay. So they simulate, and that's probably two and a half, three hours of, you know, right. so at least like two and a half hours of American league would be like seven hours, but, um, you, do, you know some of those you, you have it he does i think he does a mock press conference doesn't he or something um you yeah, know they, he goes all out he's got like a, he's got like a like a almost like a what do they call it for uh, in the nfl when you take the uh the quarterbacks the um oh the, uh, the jesus i can't think of it oh my god uh, 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 because of the l right no god i'm losing my mind um <laughs> right because you want to say it out loud and you can't yeah uh. Uh, the uh, oh crap! It's the um, oh my god, Wonderlick! My god, what's wrong? There with it is, Wonderlick! My balls! Um, so Wonderlick! My balls! <laughs> he's got his own system. He did that, you know. He he almost hired was it Madden back in Boston too? Before you know, he these are guys that do they test well in the Theo with the Theo process. And I remember when Madden, you know, it's a process. So it is not for the fan of heart. It's not for the casual. And I, I agree with it 100%. I think that I just really wish he would give Ryan Christensen a, a, a chance to at least yeah. – he's won at every level. The dude is legit. I, I just – I think he's a diamond in the rough. I think that someone's going to snag that kid sooner or later. He's a kid. He's older than me. But they're going right. to snag him. He's going he's gonna to win. I, it's a good possibility. But I'd be fine with Rossi. I'm okay with Rossi. I just – the Girardi thing more than anything else probably. Um, Loretta, no thank you. If someone uh, – my dad is stuck on Sam Fold. I'm like, dad – God, I love you. <laughs> Stop, okay? And, and I love Ryan Sandberg. He's my favorite player of all time. I grew up watching Ryan Sandberg with my great aunt Zell, drinking giant bottles of, of sugar cane Coke, watching Ryan Sandberg every single day of my life. I have pictures of Ryan Sandberg on my wall. I'm looking at it right now. I don't want him as a Cubs manager. He's not the right fit. He is also a guy that is going to more, be more of the, the hard nose thing because that's what he did. That's his thing. The Cubs need flex. Cubs need a guy like, like uh, Rossi's good, a guy that's flex, but will also, in private, not to show you up in public, but in private, mm -hmm. he's going to get in your face. And those guys respect that because guys that get in your face in front of everybody show you up. Guys that get right. in your face in private when no one's looking and when you can get it over with and hug it out after it's over, those are the right. guys you trust because they're not trying to make it look like they're doing something. They're just <sighs> doing it, and they're doing it with respect to your privacy and how you feel and your pride and your, 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 obviously your belt, you'll go too. So I would I agree with that. Girardi's will get in your face in the dugout and show everybody on TV that he's, he's, he's dressing you down and that's just not going to work with these guys. Right. So before we uh, wrap it up here, very, very important, very important. My time with my Braves hat has come to an end <laughs> and I need to pick a national league team for next year. Now, I put as the choices the Diamondbacks because they got a cool hat. The Rockies. I've always liked the Rockies. Or the Brewers. <laughs> and surprisingly, we got a lot. Brewers won in the poll, but that's just because I have a lot of White Sox fans that follow me. They're dicks. <laughs> Basically. And, but in the other category... A lot of people put the Padres. That's good. I'm kind of thinking it's going to be the Padres. You like Manny. You mm -hmm. like, I mean, and it's it's San Diego. Yeah, and I like Tatis Jr. I mean, yes, I should be a little bit bitter about them, but they're like White Sox light. And okay. They're not far off either. They're not far off. They're They're... They're a franchise that's just a couple of couple of swift, you know, swab moves away from being a, you know, a pretty, you know, I, and again, I'm still curious to see what the happens with the Dodgers this offseason. But, you know, there's that the, the bottom half of that division is wide open, too. So I, that's a good one, dude. I, I would right. I would approve of the Padres. I would um, probably 
send you boxes of cow dung and my own feces if you chose the brewers. I would make sure that at both your home and office, you're getting constant packages um, of, of my filth because that would be Fair enough. Um, that's like saying, hey, I'm going to choose my second favorite NFL team. I'll go with the Packers. <laughs> Get fucked. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, hold on. We're looking up. Let's see if this is if this is even possible. So here's the other problem. I have a uh, large head. (laughs) So they have to have a specific hat that can fit my head. It's the 3950 fitted. They gotta have it. Wait, 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 what? what? 3930, the flex hat. Oh, oh, the flex fit hat. Okay, 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 okay. I can't I can't wear standard fitted hats because my head is in between like the two big ass sizes and so one either looks really big on me or one's really tight. <laughs> so the 3930 flex hat which I found right here and they got it in all Padre designs. Go with the brown and gold, the old throwbacks. Then you could rock the old looking Bonanza out the Bonanza hats. That's what we modeled our uniforms after the old Padres. The old oh, Friar, the 84 Padres. I- Ooh, some sweet jerseys. All right, I don't hate these hats. I just brown. Whew. A4 Padres hat. Look at that thing. The brown. I got, I got oh, it. Oh, so nice. The panel, the, the yellow I, panel. Oof. Can I do this? Hold on, let's see. We're going to get real technical here. Oh, guess not. I was going to try to share my screen with you. Uh, I'm, well, I'm looking at them right now. They're beautiful. I, I love the. I actually. Well, again, we modeled our hats at Bonanza after this. You know, that, that jersey that, I mean, the bobblehead I have of Chris that he wore, I'm looking at it right oh. now. He, uh, it was his high school uniform we did, like, when they had, like, a... a but I, I got to admit, just, I like the solid blue with the white SD, the ones that they currently wear. Oh, okay. I'm just, I just a big fan of the old throwbacks, even though they beat the Cubs in 84. Well, I, I love those throwbacks. Brown and gold is so ugly, it's so awesome. I guess that's why I like it. It's like yeah. awesomely ugly. And it really it doesn't. It, I can tell you this. Having coached for 10, almost 11 years at Bonanza, those hats don't go with anything. Well, see, yeah, that's the thing is I'm not playing shortstop for my high school team. I'm going to wear this like out because I always have a hat on. So I might go with the blue, the navy blue with the white SD. That's strong. Jersey. Oh, they're on sale right now. 25 bucks. Let's do it. $25. $25. All right. You got anything else before we wrap this shit up? I mean, I, I mean, it's the playoffs. I mean, we've got Cardinals. What? what who's left now? Cardinals and uh, Nationals. And we got, what, uh, Yankees be, and probably going to be Astros, right? Unless something yeah, weird happens. Unless the Rays somehow score four runs in the next six outs. So that means that the AL is going to win the World Series. It doesn't matter who. Those two teams are far superior to anything in the National League. I would love the Nats to get there. If Davey Martinez is going to win one now, I hope it's now. Because Cubs hopefully will be back fighting next year. Right. But the Yankees, they can go suck a fat one. And, you know, the Astros, I'm good with that. That's fine. But I feel like everybody likes the Astros. Why does I mean, anybody do. like I, the Astros? I, I like the Astros, though, when they started the rebuild. So I jumped on board when they started rebuilding. So I have my old Astros hat that I because I went to a couple games out in uh, Houston. I have my hat and my hat's old. My hat's like from 2000, like 10, 2011 maybe, 2011. Mm-hmm. I think 11 or 12. It was right when they started the rebuild. I'm like, I'm gonna jump on board. My ex girlfriend was from Houston, so I was like, oh, easy, blah blah blah. But I love the old Houston hat. I got the old, you know, the old Nolan Ryan Astros hat. I love it. So I mean, but now they're kind of. I mean, they're the big dogs now. I mean, and they're not even spending that much either. That's the weird thing. I mean, they're not. They right. just built, they had enough first round draft picks for practically like better part of a half a decade so that that always helps and it was just 15 years ago the white Sox swept them in the world series this is true talk about two franchises that went into dramatically different directions after that world series and dramatically different leagues actually yeah. oh fuck yeah <laughs> yep but i don't know i'm cool with the astros i really i ideally with these four teams i'd love to see a houston washington world series that's a win-win Everybody wins. Yep. I really hate the Cardinals. Oh. I'm not a Cubs fan. I don't care. And I just really hate the Cardinals. I Yadimir Molina, the whole Mr. Respect the Game, hitting a walk-off and then taking his bat 
and throwing it into the outfield. And then cutting his throat. Yeah. Talk about a hypocrite. I don't think I've ever seen something more hypocritical. That was brutal. He's a turd. And outside of Adam Eaton, because let me reiterate, fuck Adam Eaton. <laughs> I, I really like this Nationals team. A lot of guys you can root for on this team. Mm-hmm. And they're playing, like you said, like junkyard dogs, man. I mean, who <laughs> who walks off a series in game five on the road versus the one seed by going back-to-back homers in the eighth and then a grand slam in the tenth? Dodger Stadium sounded like a mausoleum yes. after that granny. It was – that felt good. That was, that was good for anybody that's tired of hearing the West Coast, that's tired of hearing these Dodger fans, flex, 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 flex. It's almost as if they dove into Lake Superior wearing nothing but a pair of white Speedo at age 44, and now they feel like they are a 13-year-old child wearing white Speedo in cold water. So I love I didn't it. even realize that the West Coast is completely out of these baseball playoffs. Yep. We are done though. It's great. Well, that means no late games. That's that true. works for me. <laughs> so I'm old boss. But all right. Uh, as always, you can find us at Pinwheels Ivy Pod on the Twitter machine. Um, DMs are always open. Let us know what you guys want us to talk about. Otherwise, you get rambling shit like this. <laughs> uh, remember, wonder lick my balls, and we'll talk to you guys next week. That's K Fids. I'm Zo, and we'll see you next week. Be good to each other. <laughs>